نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اخوتي في الله اعلموا ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار إخوتي في الله The brothers جزاه الله خير The brothers they've been announcing about the, the title the subject of the love of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Seconds ago I changed my mind and we will talk about something that relates to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But before I do this, I request of you for the upcoming 30 minutes to let me your heart, your mind, and your ears. I don't want you to travel and leave this dunya and nas. And let us go back and see if we can imagine ourselves with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in my mind I can imagine Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his mount. The year is the 10th of Hijrah. The month is the Hijjah. The day is Jum'ah and it is indeed the day of Arafah. Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu anhu is standing close to the Messenger of Allah. And then the Messenger of Allah at that moment the revelation came down to him. And then he started reciting what he received from Allah to the Sahaba. And he recited this ayah. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Wa atzmamtu alaykum ni'mati. Wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. Today I have completed, perfected your religion. I chose Islam as a deen. Umar bin Khattab was standing there. He cried. Is a day of Arafah is a day of Jum'ah is Hajjah, the only Hajjah the Messenger of Allah made and the ayat from Allah just came down telling this Ummah that Allah is pleased with you and He blessed you with the Ni'mah of Islam and Umar bin Khattab is crying in riwayat Ibn Jarir قال رسول الله ما يبكيك يا عمر عمر why are you crying قال يا رسول الله ليس بعد الكمال إلا النقصان he said with messenger of Allah there is nothing after perfection except imperfection Islam is complete today it's perfect 
It means from this point on, we will go downhill. Umar bin al-Khattab, he felt that the time of the Messenger of Allah is near. And Rasulullah he did not say your feelings are wrong, or Umar. Rather, the Messenger of Allah moved the congregation, moved the Hujjad to Muzdalifa. And from Muzdalifa to Al Jamarat. And in the Jamarat, where the Messenger of Allah throwing stones, he turns to the Sahaba, come up Sahih Muslim, and he says to them, خُذُوا عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَلَعَلِّي لَا أَحُجُّ بَعْدَ حَجَّةِ هَادِي He said, take your rituals from me. Take your deen from me. The rituals of hajj, perhaps this could be my last hajj. And then the Messenger of Allah, he went to Mina for the days of Tashriq. And then he received this surah. إِذَا جَاءَ النَّصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَعَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابًا يقول ابن عباس كما في البخاري ومسلم يقول كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يدخلني مع أشياخ بدر عمر بن الخطاب يسجد الله مسيح with the chiefs of بدر from the Ansar and the Muhajirin. فقال بعضهم لما يدخل هذا علينا ولنا أمثال نعم مثله. They say why would this little boy is part of this meetings while we have children of his age. عمر بن الخطاب قال إنه من حيث علمتم. You know who he is. He's the cousin of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu It's not like anyone else. We're bringing him because this is who he is. فقال ابن عباس One day Umar called me and I knew he's calling me for a reason. And the Sahaba from the battle of Badr, Ashiyah Badr, they're sitting in front of Umar. And he said to them, ما تقولون في إذا جاء النصر الله والفت what do you say? How do you understand? What is your tafsir of this surah, إِلَى جَاءَ النَّصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ Some of them, they said, it means we should, be, we should be praising Allah and ask for His forgiveness if Allah gives us victory. Others, they kept silent. فَقَالَ يَا ابْنَ عَبَّاسِ مَا تَقُولِ يَا ابْنَ عَبَّاسِ What is your interpretation on the tafsir of this surah? It is what they said. قال لا. He said, "What is it?" He said, "This is nay. Allah is telling His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that your time is up. Your time is closed. So when you see إذا جاء النصر الله, comes of Mecca, والفتح Mecca, ورأيت الناس and you see people entering Islam, أفواجا." As large groups in this that moment, ask Allah for forgiveness and praise your Lord. قال عمر والله لا أعلمها except how you understood. This is what Allah will understand. After that, يا إخوتي في الله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم came back to the to the city of Medina. And Aisha said. Rasulullah is not getting sick. He's not getting sick. Well, hadith of Fidar al Qudni, was Sunan ibn Majah, was Sahih al Albani, was Hassan al Albani. Qalat Aisha. The first thing that the Messenger of Allah felt was headache. He came back from Al Baqir. Wa kana indi suwa, and I had headache, she said. Fakult, I said to him, وَصَعَ I have had it. فَقَالَ لَا يَعْيِشَتُ بَلْ أَنَا وَصَعَ I'm the one who have had it. And then he said, ما ضرّك إذا he now he's he's playing with his wife even though he's six of Allah عليه وسلم. قال ما ضرّك إن مت قبلي غسلتك وكفنتك 
وَصَلَّيْتُ عَلَيْكِ وَدَفَنْتُكِ He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Aisha, if you die before me, you know, I will wash you, I will put the shrouds on you, I will pray on you, and I will put you, I will bury you. فَقَالَتْ عَائِشَ She said, وَاللَّهِ كَأَنِّي بِكَ وَاللَّهِ إِنْ فَعَلْتَ ذَلِكَ فرجعت إلى بيتي فعرست فيه ببعض النساء غير إمرأة. she said والله it seems that you will do all that and then as soon as you bury me you're gonna come to my house and bring another wife instead of me. غير قالت عائشة then from that moment he started getting weaker and weaker and weaker. صلى الله عليه وسلم and every day that he gets sick he will say to the Sahab, Aina ana Where am I tomorrow? He's asking the day that he's going to be with Aisha radiallahu anha. Fi Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim. When he was at the house of Maymuna, subhanAllah, at the house of Maymuna, he got very sick. And then they said, Look, do. Well, look, ya ikhwati fillah is when you force someone to take a medication from the side of his cheek. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He pointed and he gestured like this. And the people said, كَرَهِيَةِ الْمَرِيدَ الدَّوَى He's a sick person, he doesn't want to eat medication, put it, give him. When he came back to his sons, قَالَ أَلَمْ أَنْحَكُمْ أَنْتُ لِدُّونِ Did I not ask you, do not force medication on me? They said, we thought, O oh, Messenger of Allah, that you're sick and you don't like medication like everyone else. He said, no one would be in this house. He said, each one of you would be forced to take medication before his death, except my uncle Al-Abbas. Finally, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gathered his wives and he said to them, I want to be with Aisha. And this is what he said when he arrived at the house. Now I feel the pain of the poisoned meat that I ate from that Yehudi lady in Khaybar. Now I feel that poison is going to kill me. That poison is going to kill me. And then Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after that, he used to come out and leave the Salah. Come out and leave the Salah. Until he became extremely weak. Extremely weak. فقال and he said to the people. قال عائشة والحديث في صحيح البخاري. He said to Aisha, مر أبا بكر فليصلي بالناس. Or Abu Bakr and let him lead the salah. She said, يا رسول الله إن أبا بكر رجل رجل ضعيف. She said, oh messenger of Allah, Abu Bakr is weak man. لا يسمع الناس من بكائه. He will not allow the people to hear his recitation from his weak. He's going to be crying. فمر عمر. Ask Umar to do this. He is جهول. He's قوي. He's strong. He can let the people hear his recitation. Hear them reciting. فقال مر أبا بكر فليصلي بالناس. مر أبا بكر فليصلي بالناس. She said, and then I went to Hafs. I said, Ya Hafs, convince the Messenger of Allah to order Umar to lead the Salah. For Abu Bakr is indeed a weak person. So Hafsa, she said the same thing to the Messenger of Allah. And he was sick, and he then he looked at her. فَقَالَ إِنَّ كُنَّ لَأَنْتُنَّ صَوَاحِبَ يُوسُفُ مُرُوا أَبَا بَكْرٍ فَلْيُصَلِّيَ بِالنَّاسِ he said, you are indeed like the women who try to plot against Yusuf. Or Abu Bakr, let him lead the salah. Hafsa qalat li Aisha, ma kunta bi usiba minka khayra. She said, Aisha, you always put me in trouble. 
You always put me in trouble with the messenger of Allah. And one of those days, ya ikhwati fillah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he felt energetic. So he saw Abu Bakr leading the salah. He called two of his family members. He said, take me to the mihra. They brought him, carrying him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his feet were dragging. And they put him, and when Abu Bakr saw that, he moved back. فَقَالَ مَكَانَكَ He said, stay where you are. And then the messenger of Allah sat next to Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr stood up. And Abu Bakr will follow the messenger of Allah, and the Sahaba will follow Abu Bakr as siddiq However, the day of al khamis came. In Sahih al-Bukhari, radiyallahu anhu, قَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ to the Sahaba. اِئْتُونِي كِتَاب He said, bring me a paper so I can write. كِتَاب لَمْ تَضِلُّ بَعْنَ You will never go straight after him. After the attempt. قَالَ عُمَرْ What is wrong with the Messenger of Allah? Or what's up with the Messenger of Allah? We have the Book of Allah. And other Sahaba said, yes, we have the Book of Allah. We don't need any other book. قَالَ وَلَا يَنْبَغِ التَّنَازُرُ And the Nabi. An argument is not allowed in the presence of the Nabi. قَالَ أُخُرِجُ عَنِّي He said, leave the house. فَمَا أَنَا فِيهُ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا أَنْتُ فِيهِ He said, well, I am in better than what you claim. قَالَتْ عَائِشَ Then the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, bring me water. Seven containers of water. And pour this water over me. <coughs> Perhaps I will talk to the people for the last time. فخرج, and they carried the messenger of Allah and he led the salah. Yahul Abi Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu. Fi Sahih al Bukhari. Qala khatabana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khatabana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَيَّرَ عَبْدًا بَيْنَ الدُّنْيَا وَبَيْنَ مَا عِنْدَهِ فَاخْتَارَ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ He said, Allah gave a servant a choice between this dunya and that which is with Allah. And that servant chose that which is with Allah. فَبَكَى أَبُو بَكَرِ أَبُو بَكَرِ يُوِيدْ فَقُلْتُ فِي نَفْسِي أَبِي سَعِيدَ الْخُلِ الْخُلِ I said to myself, Maliyubki had a shaykh. What is wrong with this old man? He pointed to Abu Bakr the Siddiq. إِنَّ كُلِّ اللَّهِ خَيَّرَ عَبْدٌ بَيْنَ الدُّنْيَا وَبَيْنَ مَا عِنْدَهِ فَاخْتَارَ مِنْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ If Allah gave a servant a choice between this dunya and the thing that he has, Jannah, he chose Jannah, why would this man cry? فَقَالَ فَكَانَ الْعَبْدُ فَكَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ هُوَ الْعَبْدُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَكَانَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ أَعْلَمَنَا That servant that he appointed was talking about was himself. And Abu Bakr knew the best, knew the best. And then the messenger of Allah turned to Abu Bakr. فَقَالَ يَا أَبَا بَكْرٍ لَا تَكِ And subhanAllah, لَا تَكِ يَا أَبَا بَكْرٍ لَا تَكِ And he turned to the Sahaba. فَقَالَ إِنَّ أَمَنَّ النَّاسِ عَلَيَّ بِسُحْبَتِهِ وَمَالِهِ أَبَا بَكْرِ He said the people that have most favor over me in terms of his companionship and his wealth is Abu Bakr. وَلَوْ كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذًا مِنْ أُمَّةِ خَلِيلًا لَتَّخَذْتُ أَبَا بَكْرِ مِنْ خَلِيلًا He said if I were to take a khalil from my ummah, I would have chosen Abu Bakr. وَلَكِنْ أُخُوَّةَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَمَوَدَّةَ but he said, rather, it's the brotherhood of Islam, the Islamic brotherhood, and this is what it is. And then he said, لَا يَبْقَيَنَّ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ بَابًا إِلَّا سُدَّ إِلَّا بَابَ بَابَ بَكْرِ Now that day, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the rest of Thursday, he never came out. The Friday, he did not come out. Saturday, he did not come out. Sunday he did not come out. 
on Monday at Salat al-Fajr, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while the Sahaba were praying, he removed the curtain from the house, from the rooms of Aisha, and he looked at the Sahaba, and he saw them in perfect state. The Imam, they are soft behind him. And then he liked the sea. He remembers perhaps the day when he was the only he was the only one who was calling people to La ilaha illallah. Now they have masjid, they have community. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَكَانَ يُعْكُ وَعْكًا شَدِيدًا فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّكَ تُعْكُ وَعْكًا شَدِيدًا قال أجل He said, you are very sick. He said, yes. He said, because you... He said, I get sick like two of you. He said, is it because you get the ajr? He said, yes. And then he said, so look at the, how he blessed the Ummah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قَالَ مَا يُصِيبُ مِنْ مُسْلِمْ شَوْكَةٍ فَمَا فَوْقَهَا إِلَّا كَفَّرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا سَيِّعَةٍ He said, nothing will happen to a mu'min as small as a thorn that poked a person, except that Allah will forgive his sins. Then he said, رضي الله عنه. At that, he said, Aisha رضي الله عنه said, the messenger of Allah was, I had him on my lap. And he was, his head was leaning on my chest. And Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr, he walked into the room. And I saw the messenger of Allah looking at him. And I saw Abdul Rahman holding his wak. Holding his wak. And I said, do you want the miswak? And he said, he not, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, I took the miswak, I gave it to the messenger of Allah. And he tried to chew it, to soften it, to use it as a miswak, but he couldn't. <coughs> he couldn't, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I said to him, yeah. Did I, should I make it soft? He said, yes. So I softened it for him, and I gave it to him. She said at that moment, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa raised his finger, saying, Bali Rafiq al-A'la, Bali Rafiq al-A'la. She said, I realize that Allah is giving him a choice. And at that moment, he dropped his finger and he died sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, I put his head, I put under his head a pillow, and I covered him and I'm crying over his body, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umar asks for permission. Umar and al mughira So he came, I put my hijab on and he walked in. And he stood in the top of the messenger of Allah. فَقَالَ وَاغَشَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, Ya Rasulullah, you indeed, you are in a lot of pain. You are indeed sick. He said they both got up and they turned and at the door Al Mughira said, Ya Umar, Mata Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Umar, Rasulullah is dead. Umar ibn Khattar he got upset, he dropped Al Mughira ibn Shu'ba. Fakala inna kimrun to susu fitna, to husu fitna. He said, You are a man of fitna, you are you boiling with fitna. Rasulullah will never die until he purified this ummah from all the munafiqeen. And the people of the masjid, they start arguing one another with one another. He's dead? No, he's not dead. He's dead, then he's not. Then Salim bin Ubay. He went, and he went after Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr came. And subhanAllah, Abu Bakr was very skinny, tiny man. Aisha thought this man cannot lead ummah um, in salah. Abu Bakr, with his tiny, you know, thin beard, he came, and he went to the house of Aisha. He did not talk to anybody. And he saw the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he kissed his forehead and he said, Allah will never allow me to taste the agony of death ever again, Ya Rasulullah. And then he went to the masjid. 
He went to the masjid. And then he said, Ya Umar, and Umar now is standing with the sword and he's saying, Wallahi, whoever says Rasulullah is dead, I will kill him. And Rasulullah will come back and he will cut the hands and the feet of those people who say he died. فَقَالَ إِجِسْ يَا عُمَرْ Sit down, O Umar. But Umar would not sit down. قَالَ إِجِسْ يَا عُمَرْ Sit down, O Umar. But Umar would not sit down. قَالَ إِجِسْ يَا ابْنُ الْخَطَابِ O son of Khattab, sit down. Umar would ignore Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And then Rasul Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he went to the member. فَحَمِدَ اللَّهَ وَأَثْنَى عَلَيْهِ فَقَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ مُحَمَّدًا فَإِنَّا مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَعْتْ O people who used to worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad is dead. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ And whoever used to worship Allah, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيُّ لَا يَمُوتْ Allah is ever living. And then he recited, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ وَإِنَّهُ مَيِّتُونَ وما محمد إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل أفإن مات أو قتل انقلبتم على أعقابكم ومن ينقلب على عقبيه فلن يضر الله شيئا وسيجزي الله الشاكرين قال عمر فوالله من هي سدع ما يفيد كنا كاري it could not carry me I realized that indeed the messenger of Allah is dead يقول Anas bin Malik, Kamafiz Bukhari Ghayri. He said the most beautiful day in the city of Medina was the day that the Messenger of Allah walked in. And the darkest day, the worst day in the history of Medina was the day that the Messenger of Allah died. He said, Wallahi, we could not recognize our hearts. And then the burial came. And this was something that Qul Umar Salama she said. We were waiting for us, for people to permit us so we can see the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the next thing that we know that they washed him and they are burying him. And then Abu Bakr comes and he says to Bilal, Ya Bilal, Adhan. Ya Bilal, Adhan. Bilal radiyallahu anhu, he was like this with the messenger of Allah. At the time of war, he was with him. At the time of peace, he was with him. At the time of hunger, he was with him. At the time of sickness, he was with him. When they traveled, they were together. When they in the city, he was with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will only eat what Bilal provides for him. He was, when the time of Salah comes, he is the Mu'addin and he is the Imam. Subhanallah. And then Abu Bakr says to him, Ya Bilal, Addin. Taqulu Umma Salama. Umma Salama said, Imam, Bilal, he went to the member and he said, Allahu Akbar. And he looked at towards the house of Aisha. As though the messenger, he's expecting Rasulullah to come out of that house. And say to him, Arihna biha ya Bilal. And then he said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. And he looked towards the house. As though he expected a miracle. And then he said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. And he kept looking towards the house. And he said, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And the whole city cried. The whole city. Men, women, children, and adults. And then he could not continue with Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then when he finished the Adhan, he came down and he sat in the middle of the masjid. فَقَالَ يَا أَبَا بَكْرِ وَاللَّهِ لَا أُؤَذِّن لِبَعْدِ لِبَعْدِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ لَا أُؤَذِّن لِأَحَدِ بَعْدَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ اِخْتَارُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ وَأَذِّنَا he said, Wallahi, I will not call Adam for anyone after the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And he left the city of Medina. He could not bear being in the city, walking through the street of city, where he used to walk with the messenger of Allah, walking by himself. He could not imagine praying in his masjid, masjid al-Nabi, when someone else is leading. He could not imagine 
being in that environment without the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa He couldn't. Why? Because they really loved him sallallahu alayhi wa See, we don't love the messenger of Allah. In reality, we, we, we don't say it. We don't say we don't love Rasulullah. But with our actions, we don't. You know, with our deeds, we don't. When you see the Sahab of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Rawaha, he's walking in the middle of the street, coming to the masjid, and he hears a messenger of Allah saying, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people sit down. And he says, he says in the middle of the road, and the people said, Why are you sitting here? And he says to them, Ama sami'tum Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya ya ayyuhal nas, ijlisu. He said, Oh, people sit down. I'm not going to move disobeying the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm not going to go forward knowing that he says sit down, even though he meant some Allah the people in the masjid. Where is your love? Where is my love that we have for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It is not in our lives. It is only in the books, ya ikhwati fi it, do you know you, do you think why these people said this about the messenger of Allah? Why do you think these people hate Rasulullah? Why do you think they made the movie? They never met the man, the man sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They never met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They never lived with him. Why do they hate him so much? Because they hate us. They see him through us. They think that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised a nation who have no value. They don't go and read the Sunnah. They don't read the Quran. They think we are the product of Muhammad, when in reality we're not. We're not. You know, SubhanAllah, when it's extremely frustrating. Sometimes the way we live our lives, and then we claim something else. It was 2000, Four. I'll tell you this. See, sometimes you guys think this is London, Ontario, we have fun, you know, Toronto, we have fun. But we don't realize all these people, when they see us, they watching us. And they think this is Islam. Whether you are a cab driver, or an engineer, or a mechanic, or a doctor, or a lawyer, when they see your name is Abdullah, or Muhammad, or Muslim name, and you behave certain way, they cannot differentiate between Islam and Muslims. They can't. In, in the city of Calgary, a brother calls me, and he says to me, we have a lady who knows everything about this, or she knows a lot about Islam. All she needs is a little push, encouragement, just that. Can you please come over? So I went, thinking that like every other Muslim, I will tell her about Islam and the beauty of Islam, and I will say, this, say the shahada, and she will repeat the shahada after me. And then the sister would hug her, and Allah will what she would do after that. But to my surprise, I went to the house and I saw this lady, you being background, and she's saying, she's sitting there, and I said, What do you know about Islam? And she said, I used to live in Calgary, then I went to a Muslim country for work, me and my husband, and my daughters. And when I went, I saw people walking into a building many times a day. I said, who are those people? They said, they are Muslims. I said, what do they do? They said, she, they, said they pray. I got jealous, she said. I never used to go to the church other than Christmas. I never used to read the Bible. But these people, four or five times, you know, they go into the masjid. So I watch them. I see them going in and out, in and out, in and out. I said to my husband and my daughters, we must do the same thing for our religion. I asked for a church, and they said there's a church in the city. So I went to the church. I enrolled my daughters and my husband Bible classes. And they became very devoted Christians. 
But as for me, she said, that did not satisfy me. Whatever this uh, preacher is saying did not satisfy me. So I went to Islamic bookstore. And I bought Muslim books. And I read about them. And then I thought she was saying, MashaAllah, I, Alhamdulillah, what should I say? She stood up and she picked her pur the purse. And I'm looking at her, you know, but I'm not looking straight, but she's standing up. And I'm surprised. And I looked at her. And the only thing that was moving was tears coming from her eyes. I said, MashaAllah, her iman is ready. She started to say the shahada. After a long, long time, through a killing cycle, she said, I will never become a Muslim. I said, why? She said, if I become a Muslim, I'm going to become like you. And I will never allow me to be like you. And she walked out of the house. Wallahi, she changed her number. She moved out of that address. And nobody knows what happened to her. Every single day, I say to myself, what happened? Maybe, yes, she should not judge us. She should judge Islam. But she cannot differentiate. When these people see us behaving a certain way, they think this is Islam. So if you really love the messenger of Allah, you will implement everything that he did and everything that he said, and you will love Islam based on the messenger of Allah, not the society. Look, how much, look at our children. Look at them. They try to be like, you know, Western, well, Westerners. They don't want to be like that. Because they really don't know what Muhammad, who Muhammad is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and what, how to love him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah said, and this is for the brothers, I know we all sad when you hear the death of the Messenger of Allah. But the Messenger of Allah, the messenger of Allah said, كَمَا فِي صَحِيحِ Muslim. قال إن الله إذا أراد رحمة أمة من عباده. If Allah wants to have mercy on a nation of His servants, He will take the soul of their prophet before them. He will allow their prophet to die before the Ummah. Why? قال فيجعله لها فرض وسلف بين يديها. So this messenger of that ummah would be there for the ummah when one of them dies, when Yom Qiyamah comes, he is there, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died before us because this is a rahmah from Allah. However, we carrying the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this. And I will say we we'll conclude with this. See brothers? I was born in Somalia, Muslim country, 100% all Sunni, all Muslim, majority, all of them Shafi'is. We have no differences. Then I moved to Saudi, where I will go to Haramain, Mecca and Medina. But why am I here? Why am I here? See, I, I thought I would come here. So I can, you know, uh, improve my lifestyle, get a degree, get a decent job, make a lot of money. But little did I know that Allah had planned, had different plan for me, and He brought you here for a similar reason, not for you to live for yourselves, rather to live for a disdain. And if people are not accepting Islam because of us then we are defeating the purpose of Allah bringing us here. If people are running away from Islam because of us, instead of accepting Islam, imagine the responsibility and the questions that, the questions that are ahead of us. When Allah said, why did you do this? Because this person, that person, this person, 
say these people were such and such. So what I will say, if you really love the Messenger of Allah, follow him. And it tiba an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in everything. Don't tell me, oh the beer is just a sunnah, or the pants is short is just a sunnah, or moving the finger is just a sunnah, or praying jama'ah is just a sunnah, or you know niqab is just a sunnah. If this is just a sunnah, then what's the point? You see these kids when they love one of the entertainers, they do whatever they do. If he's a basketball player, they buy their jerseys, they carry their name, they carry their number, they carry the name, team of the, the name of the team. But you and I, we say we love the messenger of Allah, but why are you not practicing his sunnah? Why are you not following his tariqah? Oh, it's just a sunnah, yeah. why are you a wahhabi guys? You know, why are you complicating things? Why are you making it difficult? It's not. It's not. Yani fi'na. If we love the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should follow everything that he did. Umar Abdullah ibn Umar, if Rasulullah went, went around the tree, he used to go around that tree. Abdullah ibn Umar. If Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rode his camel at this point, he will ride his camel at that point. If he got up at that point, he will get up at that point. You don't have to be like this, but even the basic sunnah is struggling. You know? I will conclude with this statement of one of the poets. He said, this poet, he said, he said, you've been and we were, you've been there and we're here. He said, when we think of you, sadness kills us. But the only thing that we rely on is on the day of Yom al Qiyamah, if we could not beat you in this dunya, on the day of Yom al Qiyamah, we will meet you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will forget anything we have to do with Allah.